Anyway, <laughs> hello everyone and welcome to the next, well, current CRT live stream. Number five? I think it's number five. Let's go with number five. Five sounds good. Who have we got here today? How many people? Seven starting with. It's a good start. Let's have a shout out to everyone who's coming back from a, a previous, a pre, I almost said a previous life then. <laughs> come back to a previous, come back from a previous live stream. And hello to anyone else who's not seen one of these before. The drill is pretty simple. We have the desk space, we get the print parts and we build the printer. I'm not doing the whole thing. I don't do a, like a entire six hour, entire printer stream. Hello Kim, welcome back. I don't do a whole six hour live stream. I do sort of step by step. So I actually don't have all the parts with me at the moment, but just a little recap. So you know where we are. Sorry, got to move the camera. Mm. This is the bit we did last time, which, so we had a bit of a, a midweek stream talking about these, the lead screw nuts. Uh, they're pretty interesting sort of, they're a pretty interesting subject in my opinion. <laughs> if you think the same things of me as interesting, then you'll probably think it's interesting too. Right. Other than building, so today I'm going to get as far as I can with this. There are some parts that I need to carry on too much further. So we're going to do a little bit of this. And the other thing we're going to do, this is a power supply for one of my printers. And it's a little bit, well, it's not completely broken, but the power supply fan just makes this absolutely horrendous noise. So it's either spinning too fast, which seems unlikely, or the bearings are sort of shot in the shot, damaged in the fan. So it just makes this horrible, like shafty grinding noise. So I'm gonna try and replace that. And I've got things to do that. So, well, I guess let's get on with it. If you have any questions along the way about this, anything else on the channel, Steve, CoreXY, all that sort of stuff. Hello, Eric from the Netherlands. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Yeah, if you have any questions along the way, I'm just gonna, I can't remember what I need. Let me check the instructions. I have, sorry, I haven't got the instructions on the screen. So I'm just sort of looking over here. Whenever I'm looking over here, it's because that's where the instructions are. I'm not just doing this sort of pouty off camera thing. There is a reason. Uh, so where did we get to? So my parts are very slightly different. So I can't follow this exactly. So, okay, let's put this to one side. We're gonna need this and these. The next part actually might be a bit difficult for you to see everything because I've got to get this lot on here. So for anyone that hasn't seen what I'm up to, this is a self-sourced Prusa build. So. You could call it a Prusa clone, but it's more like a replica. So like an enthusiast of films might try and make exact replicas of things. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do. Make the exact same thing without buying a kit. I'm not sure entirely what the point is, but it's been quite fun. You sort of find out what parts are easily available and what parts are not. So yeah, this is my frame. These are my motors. I know the original Prusa has integrated lead screws but trying to buy those at low cost is just not possible without them being bent. So I've gone for some slightly more standard options with couplings. I mean, there shouldn't be very much difference really between these two options. So I don't think it's going to be any much of a worry. Can everyone hear me fine? Just want to check how many people, have we got more than 10 people? We're up to 10 people. Hello, uh, the remaining additional three people that have joined since we started. Just want to check that everyone can hear me all right. This sounds okay, yes. Hopefully, hopefully yes. 
Hopefully, yes. Let me, sorry, just rearranging the window slightly. There we go. Oh, we're down to nine. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so the first things first is to get these on. So when you're doing, just for a bit of education along the way, when you're putting couplings on like this for 3D printers, the best way, in my opinion, to do it is to make sure that the um, lead screw touches the top of the drive. So what you don't want is for it one to be supported at the top and to have that spring, because that way, whenever you're going up and down or moving, you get a lot of vibration trends, sort of, yeah, like that. It'll move. You don't want it to move. So you want to basically put this through here. Can you see? Yeah, let's see. It's perfect. You want to put it right up against the the drive. Of course, I can't do that yet because I need to put the uh, carriage in. So, sorry if that's a bit loud. Because of this slightly different arrangement, I have to do the assembly in a bit of a different way. Hello Fabio, I'm guessing you just arrived. I'm pretty sure I just explained that. <laughs> so I know the uh, original Prusa has integrated lead screw motors, but the literally the only difference, the, sorry, the only reason I didn't is I couldn't get the right uh, lead, the right lead screw and integrated motor at a decent, at a decent price and hopefully reliably getting it straight. So while you can get them low cost from somewhere like AliExpress, they're just, because they because it has a stepper motor attached to this long rod, they generally don't ship very well unless they're packed properly in a piece of like uh, closed cell foam. But normally they're just like stub shoved in a tube and the things bend and you end up with bent lead screws and pretty much pointless. So I've just gone for a, an alternative. My lead screws are actually far too long, so they'll stick out the top, but it literally makes no difference to performance or anything, so. I could cut them down, but honestly, I can't be bothered. It just literally makes no difference. So to do this, we've got to get this in here. This goes this way up. Ah, that's going to be a bit difficult because this needs to be like this. Hopefully I can find I'll be back in a minute and I'll just leave it live. Uh, I'd need to get something to support this on. So I should have thought about that before. Aha, I found tape. So hopefully we can use this under here. this jazz all in the right place. Mm. Unfortunately it's not the largest space for actually building a printer. But it is at the computer which is obviously useful when doing a live stream. Let's get this in the middle. Okay so hopefully now we can get our smooth rods and these through. Hello Derek, oh, you, <laughs> you commented that you thought that I was not in the UK. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, glad you could make it. Glad you enjoyed the videos on Steve. Why not use one motor and a belt? Uh, do you mean as in one stepper motor for Z? Well, the whole idea is to be exactly the same as the Prusa printer the Prusa i3 Mark II S. So if I didn't, or if, sorry, if I used a, whatever, what you just suggested, to just, yeah. I didn't even finish the sentence, but I think you get what I mean. <laughs> it's just the idea is to be exactly the same. To be honest, I, I see a lot of people actually use that sort of method where you have a single stepper and a pulley across. I don't see, 
I mean, so a bit of a long story here. When I first looked at 3D printers back in 2012, and then started, and then I looked to buy my own about a year later, probably. I was I was still curious about the Dual Z because the I originally had a solid doodle at work. So it, that has a single Z stepper motor, and I didn't know that much about all these stepper motors and things at the time. I was just curious of how you could get those two stepper motors to always be exactly the same, and it might be better to have a belt between them to keep them... There we go. To keep them relatively the same, you know, relative to one another. But just you just don't need to. There's, there's no advantage to linking stepper motors together. They're sort of digitally controlled. Or is it analog? But either way, they're controlled. Uh, I might actually use a hammer here. <laughs> I know it's not it's not cool to use a hammer, but it's gonna Yes, hammer. Just what I want to say to you from you and Tech to see a bit my hope you love it. Just want to make it into a 300 by 300 without adding a second Z axis. So I'm redesigning the Z axis map. Cool, Derek. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, the uh, the Hypercube and Steve are very similar. It's sort of funny, really, because I, although uh, the Hypercube was released after, uh, sorry, before Steve. That doesn't look right. That's right. Uh, yeah, even though it was released before Steve, my design was sort of already done when that was released. I just hadn't built it. So they ended up looking very similar despite being designed by two completely different people at two completely different times. But there you go, such is life. I uh, need to reduce. <coughs> What I wanted to achieve with my printer instructions is that, that there was just a lot of information. A lot of the 3D printer designs that are out there, I think you can sort of include the Hypercube in this, is although the design is good, it's not that easy to actually build because there's not very many instructions. Whereas for mine, I did not only a step file that you could download and look at, but there's also 2D drawings to help you with the assembly process and there's videos to help you with the assembly process. So I just wanted to make sure it was really accessible to anyone that actually wanted to be able to, to build it. Are these 3D printed? Yes, these are all 3D printed parts. They're 3D printed off my other Prusa printer, which is not, a, this, that's an actual Prusa, that's a, uh, a Cintron Prusa. It's not a Prusa, it's a Cintron, but you know what I mean. It's a Prusa clone, an actual clone, as opposed to a not a clone clone, like this one. <laughs> I'm going to get so confused about talking about, talking about these. What do I think of Delta printers? Uh, I've never owned one, so I think my opinions on them are honestly limited. I can't say a whole lot when I've not even owned one. But, I mean, the, it looks to me like their main benefit is speed. So, by the process by which I do 3D printing, they'd probably be the best option for me. Because I don't generally print very big things. I mean, most of what I print <laughs> is 3D printer parts. Uh, but I just, I can't stand waiting. For me, prints of an hour, an hour and a half, a sort of middle of the range, three, four hours is the longest I'd bother with. I get a bit bored waiting after that. Because <laughs> uh, I always, I, if you're gonna print something that's three, four hours long, you should probably be printing it with thicker layers, a bigger nozzle, and just chucking the plastic out a bit faster. Sorry, you probably can't see everything that I'm really doing. Uh, and that's probably not helping. It's not even straight. Sorry, it's a disaster, but let's carry on. 
I need the hammer. Where's the hammer gone? Yes, that's an approved process for tightening. No, it's not, but it works. Okay. Oh dear, I've had a bit of an oversight there, haven't I? That's silly. Okay, so I, I might as well show you this. Uh, so what I was going to do, to get the... Uh, X-axis straight, you bring it all the way up to the top and hit it against these. But I've just realised that my stepper motor hits against the side. And the reason that that's really bad is because the whole idea is I could use the original firmware. Now I'm going to look like a right fool. So the whole point of this frame and everything was I could use the exact same firmware as the original Prusa. But if you look here, you'll see why that's just become quite difficult. Uh, can you see? No, sorry. I'm going to have to freehand it. So that comes up to there. And as that comes up, the step motor hits on the edge of that piece of aluminium. And it's supposed to come all the way up here. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. That's a bit annoying. Yeah, the frame is aluminium. It's water jet. I'll probably just cut it. I'll have to do some adjustment myself, which is not what I wanted to do, but it will work. So I think I'll be doing that. And then I'll change the design so that if I ever, well, I'm never going to be making more of these, I don't think. What I should do, maybe I'll level it against the bottom. Let's try that. Let's bring it all the way down. Oh, those. <laughs> For anyone wondering, these uh, can you see here? So I'm going to move the camera again. Yeah. The lead nuts are what I did talked about on a previous stream. Am I going to? I think I'm going to get more problems here. So that's as far down as I can go. Hopefully the design doesn't need to go down any further in order to hit the bed with the nozzle. If it does, I shall have to make some adjustments. So down here we're now getting... Uh, sorry if you're getting a bit dizzy. Down in here. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the Z switch contacts the the coupler, which is presumably why there's no couplers on the original Prusa. If I might have to make some adjustments for that, we'll see how we go. It depends how far the nozzle comes down. If the nozzle can still get to the bed, then it's not a problem. But if this prevents the nozzle getting to the bed, then I might have to actually raise the bed up a bit, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Might be a bit of a pain, but you know, such is life. Never, never does anything work out perfectly. So this is actually Hmm. Doesn't come. It's because the uh, so my steel rods are quite stiff in these end plastic parts. So because they're not exactly parallel, it doesn't line up hugely well. But what I can do, hopefully, is just tighten this one here, and that will force that steel 
rod through yeah, so by extending that hmm maybe I mean it's difficult I think I'll leave it for now I'll just put them tight ish and then when I've got more of the printer together I can look at taking some time to get that straight and level but that is looking pretty good I think the majority of that is just fine you just finished a 72 hour print that's ridiculous. <laughs> I've never even run a printer overnight. I just don't trust them enough, let alone leaving the house. I mean, yeah, I don't think I'd want to risk it. If I bought literally all the highest quality parts, then I might. In fact, I probably would. But with the low cost Chinese parts, just can't justify leaving, leaving it alone. Right, so that's that, that little lot, lot together. Cool, looks pretty, pretty good. Right, so what have we got to do next? That's that on there, that on there, that on there. This is instructions, that on there, that on there, that on there. Okay, so now we've got to get the bed, the, uh, bed, the bed axis, the Y axis in. So let's raise these up. Yeah, I'm starting to not like these couplers actually already. I might actually see if I can invest in some uh, proper measures. But for now, they will be just fine. Right, let me get the bed, Y axis. Ta-da! Doesn't go like that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so. So you, what you gotta do is you gotta get these nuts separated so that the, uh, the frame can slot onto those. What's the chances of this going in without me breaking anything? Uh, pretty much zero. Oh. Well, that's gone far too well. looking pretty sweet look at that this uh handy cam you again oh yeah it looks all right super long lead screws out the top but other than that looking pretty good Right, now I think what we need to do is make sure that these are equal. So I'm not sure quite how we're gonna do that. Let's get... The very nears. This is actually not going to be that easy. I think probably 
the best thing to do will be tighten. I tighten one side and then make the other side the same. Oh, this is going to be really difficult from above. How the hell am I supposed to do this? That is not going to work from above. Multi-material extruder, probably not to begin with. When I've got everything running, I might actually, because it's a good expansion to the, uh, the Prusa setup, isn't it? So it will probably be something I look at. It'd be nice to have a, uh, like a kit version of that. A self-sourced kit version, I should say. Just use my vice grip fingers to tighten them down. Hmm. I'm not going to worry too much about it being sort of correct at the moment. Just going to get it assembled and I can do the uh, sort of calibrate things at another time. Where am I from? I'm from the UK. I live in the UK and I have pretty much always lived in the UK. getting pretty heavy now. I'm just worried about crushing the tiny little wires. That. Oh my days, that's heavy. Heavy but impressive looking. I need to get rid of these zip ties. Ah, he's noticed. <laughs> that was a good spot. Yes. So, for those that didn't notice, if we turn the camera up here. At the top of the frame, there's these. So, for those not familiar, that is the hole mounting solution for a NEMA 17. So, at the top of the frame, although you might have, you might lose some z-axis, who cares? Well, a lot of people, but <laughs> you can put uh, a Bowden in there if you wanted to, if you wanted to, or you can just use the mounting holes to put brackets to make them higher. But the whole idea was to at least put something in there. So I've put some, some of these uh, alignment holes, the NEMA 17 places, just so you've got, if you, yeah, you know, you can just upgrade by, screwing stuff to it. That was the basic plan. Oh, if you want to know more specifically, I'm down around the Sussex area, the south of the UK. Which is why I don't have... Let's not go there. <laughs> for those anyone not in the UK actually let's not bother let's not even go there I was going to go with like accents and let's not even let's not even do that 
too many accents in the UK to worry about. Right. So we've tightened the frame. It's probably not right, but it will do. Right, let's get the belt in. You can just about. Uh -huh. Who likes the the fern, the plastic fern? <laughs> plastic plants are definitely the best plants because they require no care. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> no. uh, okay, so how we, how does it want me? Mm, this way. This is really not the best angle for doing this, but I shall do it this way nonetheless. Is that going to be. I think that's going to be about right. The disadvantage of not having the original manual and everything is that I can't. I don't. I don't know what the exact right belt lengths are and stuff like that. Because even though it's an open source printer, they don't really tell you much of that at all. For the instructions, they just say use the longest one and use the shortest one. Yes, I've not dusted my plants, but that's because I've not had them very long. <laughs> when I need to dust them, I'll probably just put them in the bath <laughs> and shower the plants. I think that's probably the easy way, because you can't really dust a fern. It's just, why are we talking about dusting plants on a stream? <laughs> Things got out of hand, right? I can't get that. Uh. Here we go. So that's now got to come back through here, I think. Yes. I'm going to cut the end of this belt off, so I hope it's. Sorry. Because uh, the end of it's just so curly, it's difficult to thread it through. Oh, no, it's just another curly end. God damn it. This is impossible. Well, obviously, it's not impossible. It's just difficult and annoying. There. Ah, it's gone the wrong way. Okay, it's through. And now I've got to do this end. <laughs> At least I don't have big fingers. I have like skinny lady fingers, so it makes it fairly easy to do this sort of thing. Right, that looks pretty good. Right, this is Actually, I'm going to make a point. I'm going to make a point out of this, because in the 3D printing Facebook group, I keep seeing people having huge amounts of troubles trying to tighten their belts, and they're just trying to develop super complicated mechanisms to try and tighten a belt, and it's just not necessary. So, I'm going to make a point out of out of this. So, hopefully, you guys will remember this, and you can go tell everyone else. Because I try telling people and they just ignore it. So, here, this is how you tighten. Oh, okay, not with that. This is how you tighten the belt. First, you loosen the stepper motor because the stepper motor can pivot a little bit. It doesn't need to pivot a lot, just a little bit. So, yeah, you can take the screws just out a little there. There you go, that one's just out. And that one's just out. So now, let's step it. See, it's not a lot, not a lot, but it is a little bit. So I can now get that through here. Let's cut a decent length of that.
Sorry, I can't talk when I'm concentrating. <laughs> uh. I can't even, let's turn it around. If I turn it around, it at least is in the light and I can see it a little bit better. So yes, at this point you turn, you t put your belt on of a reasonable tightness, just as tight as you can sort of get it using your hands. Not that one, a little bit more. Can we get it in there? Right, so that's not on there. It's it's not tight. It's not super tight. You wouldn't want to leave it like that, but it's good enough. So now what you do, come back around to the front and try not to cross the tiny little cables. Ah, blooming cables. And oh, it's so heavy. All right. Uh. So back to here, this, oh, I might have done it too much. Yeah, see, you see how that works? So that's sort of slack, tighten up slightly, and now, now it's tight. So that's all you have to do. Loosen the stepper motors, place your belt on. Hello? Is everyone there? Damn. I honestly don't, don't know what happened. The internet was just like, nope, gone. Finished. That's enough for today. Well, we were doing good. We had 13 people. And now we're on two. Well, there must be more. There's three people that said back. Sorry, everyone, for that. Do apologise. Not sure quite what happened. It wasn't the same problem as last time. It was a completely different problem. Up to nine. Oh, mine just says three still. Well, at least we're good. Okay, so there's probably most people back. <laughs> No, I don't have an internet meter. <laughs> it is still, the uh, the OBS thing is still going like red, yellow, red, yellow. It's not happy, it's not happy at all. I wonder if my, oh God, it's gonna go, it's gonna go, no. I wonder if my uh, supply, provider, supplier, if my provider doesn't like me doing consistent uploading. Is it there or is it gone? It's trying to do like 6,000 kilobits a second for some reason. Okay, I'll just carry on and hopefully you guys can catch as much as you can catch. I think we might need a different belt though. So what I was trying to explain before it cut out is that the... Is it gone again? Oh, for fuck's sake.
It's just, it's all over the place. Sorry, sorry. Thank goodness I don't rely on my income for this. <laughs> I'd be pretty miffed if that was the case. Uh, come on. Here we go. So the Prusa relies on this locking mechanism between the teeth of the, the its own belt. So if those, see like that, if the teeth just are too soft, the belt's too soft or it's not well made, they'll just slip past each other, which is pretty much no good at all. Maybe you could say it's a mechanism to prevent over tightening of the belt. <laughs> But I don't think that's true. And now I can't get the If the chat window in your stream is what you see. Are you tricking us by staying perfectly still for 20 seconds at a time? No! <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to... Oh, God. Well, thank you for sticking with me, those who are. Sticking through the hard times. And you can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. Come on. This is a rubbish belt. Either that or the print part's not quite right. The holes are not lining up on the stepper motor anymore, which is weird. Honestly, this is a good way to tighten the belt if it works. Oh god, it's gone again. I've n honestly no idea. Just looking at my router, is, is it on? Is it on? Might be on. Carry on, it's okay. How is it okay? It's flipping terrible. My my router says data rate up is 20,000 kilobits a second and that down is 80,000. Try and lower to 720p. I don't know if I can do that whilst remaining live. Yeah, I can't. I can change. Try and change the bit rate down, but trouble is, it's literally dropping to zero. So regardless of what I put it at, it's just going to drop. I wonder if it's trying to do a Windows update or something stupid. It's 
Sorry, everyone. Let me just try and monitor network usage and see if I can find out what's going on. Okay, I'm going to close my, hmm, actually, there's barely anything. I could, I mean, I could shut it down if I, sh uh, if I close Chrome. I now can't see what you lot are seeing. Is this kind of be printer better than Steve or Core XY? Uh, no, not really. It's a, uh, it's more popular. Steve's fairly limited number of people have them. How are we looking on the stream? Is it looking any better? That's the question. I'm going to try and monitor it on my phone. Not that that's the best thing, but. Hopefully we can carry on with the actual stream. Are we looking a bit better? I don't have a PS4. I have no idea what's going on. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. I'm just trying to close down anything that might be doing any sort of updates or anything stupid. Um, how are we looking? Is it any better? It doesn't look any better. It's still just. Oh, it might actually be. It's like a minute behind, I think. It's dropping frames. Why am I dropping so many frames? Okay, that'll do for now. Just gonna try and get this sort of at a acceptable state now. Come on, get in. For some reason it's screwed. Build a happy cube myself. I'm really happy with how it performs. Yeah, the uh, Hypercube and Steve is Core XY are both very similar. 
One of the big benefits, I think, of those designs is that you don't have a moving bed. The bed doesn't have to go forwards and backwards. Well, obviously the bed still moves, it moves up and down. I don't know what's going on with that. There we go. Huh. Okay, I think we've... Uh, that works, that works. That works. Stream is probably like five minutes behind. Oh, we've gone back to green. Maybe something I closed down did the trick. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? <laughs> Got no instructions or anything now. Okay, where are we getting to? <coughs> sorry, everyone, sorry. Okay, let me get rid of this. We can do a little bit of the extruder assembly. In fact, I think maybe we'll just leave that there for today. And we'll take a look. Uh, right, so this is the second half of the stream. Trying to take a look at this and see how if we can just replace the fat. It's nothing too surgical or excessive or particularly clever. So basically when you turn this on, I'm not going to demonstrate it now because I haven't got a cable for it, but when you turn it on, the fan just makes this horrendous noise. It's like a grinding noise. So I've got some fans, hopefully. Yeah, it's a 60 mil fan. So that will go in there. The cable's probably a bit long, but no worries. That can just sit in there and we'll work out how it fixes to it. I don't really know at the moment. So the first thing to do is obviously be very, very careful and I wouldn't advise anyone to do this. Mr. Poof, I remember you. You've been on the stream before. I think you were on my very first live stream. Welcome back. It's a bit weird now. The only place I can see the chat is on the screen in OBS. So don't know how delayed that is, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The stream quality is absolutely terrible. It's, uh, sorry, let me, okay, so the problem with the power supply, hopefully I can get this explained before it cuts out again. It makes a horrible sound, like a eh sort of sound, not like a sort of sound. We like the but not the Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> right, let's carry on. Yeah, sorry, I, I try to see, hmm. I'm not very good at organizing things. So when I have time, I just say right an hour until the live stream and that's it. I'm trying to get them more regular over the last two, three weeks has it been? I've done them around this time. So this weekend I did it, last weekend. Did I do one the weekend before? And I did one midweek as well, but this, afternoon so saturday afternoons are probably the time when i'm going to be doing them so hopefully uh 
the lack of announcement will be less of a problem when I start doing them more regularly because people will know when it is regardless of when the announcement is. Hopefully if everyone knows it's going to be around Saturday afternoon between about 2 o'clock and about 6 o'clock then I will just be defining the exact time. Right. If anyone ever opens a power supply don't touch too many things. <laughs> you will regret it, I can assure you of that. So, I don't know if you, any of you have seen Tech2C's videos, but I have, and they're pretty good videos. Uh, he did a bit about the uh, temperature regulator in here, so I'm pretty sure if you look down there, that little wire that crosses that point is basically shorting out where there should be a temperature sensor. So the temperature sensor goes on here on the coil, the transformer. I believe that's what that is. Well, this is also a transformer. This is a choke, I think. My electrical knowledge is not the best. Uh, but yeah, there should be a temperature regulator in here, but obviously to cut the cost of the unit, they just don't put it in. Because that's how you cut cost. You just don't put things in, apparently. So. The good news is the connector is exactly the same. The bad news is the cable is about a quarter of the length. So let's get rid of that for a moment and get rid of this off of here. I think I have a plan for how this, how I can do this. So. Can anyone tell me how many people are watching? Because I have no idea. <laughs> I just got OBS open. If I open anything else, it seems to just crash, it crash the stream. Right. Well, it looks like I got about the right. It's actually quite different. That's going to be a lot more powerful. A Fourteen volt fan. Interesting. So this is yeah, high current, same voltage. This is high voltage, lower current. Hopefully they're going to do roughly the same amount of cooling. If not, then I might be in a spot of bother. So what I want to do, I think, is probably try and make this cable the same length as this one. 13 people! Good stuff. Okay, thank you all. I think I just want to add some heat shrink and sort of fold the cable over like this. It's not delicate, it's not elegant, rather. I think it's quite dependent where you're watching it from because my phone has just put that. Oh, this not go into that. It's like Inception. Have you been able to solve your heat bed problem with Steve? Uh, so the problem I was getting, I think, was capacitive couplings, Cu capacitive coupling, which is basically where you have alternating circuits and two large. Uh, metallic surfaces close together but not touching. One induces a sort of current in the other. This is not very easy to do. Uh, so in short, I know what the problem is. I've got a new bed. I got a new bed before the other one. So I originally had one from Philofarm. A bed, a heated bed from Philofarm rather. Uh, and that's the one that had the capacitive coupling. And I thought it was a problem with the bed and it might have been as well a sort of combination of the two. So they agreed to send a replacement, which ended up taking about four months to arrive. So in that time, I bought one from Kinovo and it had a PT100 sensor instead of a 100K, which is a little bit annoying because that means you have to have an adapter and all this sort of malarkey. So... I've got that on and I have got, I think, everything I need for Steve to be running. I've just not run him recently, so I need to get on and do that really. And maybe I'll do a stream midweek. Midweek's not going to be easy this week. But I might have a stream in the near future as a sort of getting Steve back up and running again. Because he's been not printing for quite a long time. I'm just going to go find some heat shrink that I can use to put around this. In fact, I shall do a be right back. Grab yourselves a drink 
and I shall do the same and we'll be back in two or three minutes. Right. Hopefully you all had a little break. I don't know if that was two or three minutes. I honestly didn't time it. Uh, what I'm going to do here, just carefully remove this connector on the end so I can slip the heat shrink over. By the way, I'm going to uh, let you know when I see the stream on my phone, so you have an idea of what the delay is. At the moment, it's still playing that weird funky music that it does in the uh, <laughs> in the break. There we go. It's just come back. <laughs> it's quite a while. Okay, so that's that. So I can now stick this over the end. Oh, that looks pretty good, I think. About similar. All right, let's just shrink the heat. Right. Okay, okay. So let's make sure we get these rise the right way around. 
I should have so black go this side. There we go. Okay. So that fan replaces that fan. Pretty much the same. Not perfect, but definitely close enough, I think, for my requirements anyway. So let's get this back in here. So, which way round was it? <laughs> Uh, that goes that way, that goes that way, that goes that way, this goes maybe that way? Let's go with that way. Can't remember which way, so this way I'll do. How's the stream quality now? Mine's still all over the shop. The bitrate is just literally doing this. It's jumping between about 400 and 5,000, even though I've set it to 200. So it should never go, uh, not 200, 2,000 rather kilobits per second. So it would seem to be basically ignoring as far as I can tell. Sorry, you can't see any of this, can you? It's watchable, sometimes freezes. Okay. Well, the problem is, I think a lot of people will just, especially on long things, it gets a bit annoying, doesn't it? If it keeps cutting out, it just gets a bit frustrating. is being a pain this screwdriver let's use a little one where's the bit there I want to go? oh I'm exhausted already no I'm pretty sure it's still my end that's rubbish it's all over the place
Right. Rotten from this rightly, but I'm pretty happy with that. Weirdly, I expected this to be sort of have a grinding noise to it. So maybe it wasn't the fan after all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the fan that was making the noise. And if it wasn't, then all of this was for nothing. Right. I think that's going to be it for today. It's been a bit of a stressful stream as the whole thing's gone badly. <laughs> no, it's been all right. Just the stream quality from the internet's not been good. So thank you everyone for joining me. I do really appreciate you taking the time to converse with me while I'm building this. It's not just nice to talk to uh, people that enjoy watching the videos and happy to stay there and listen and watch. So yes, that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.